Dear students, good morning. Welcome to La Excellence IAS. Today, we are doing a special video on the schemes for Prelims 2020. You know that La Excellence launched Prelims Marathon Series 2020 under the leadership of Mali Shuri Ma'am. In this, I did part one video on schemes. This is a continuation of that, uh, that is part two. In this, we will discuss certain important uh, schemes which are there in the news why they are in the news also we will be discussing so that we can frame certain questions surrounding those controversies and make an answer to it at the end of the video i will be giving you five to six questions and we will be discussing the same the first set of schemes these are called mandan yojanas or pension schemes there are three different programs in this Pradhana Mantri Shrema Yogi Mandan Scheme, Pradhana Mantri Kisan Mandan Scheme, Pradhana Mantri Lagu Vyapari Mandan Scheme. All these schemes eligibility is more or less the same. 18 to 40 years you have to contribute to the scheme. After 60 years you get a fixed pension of 3000 rupees per month. If the pensioner dies, his spouse will get half the amount of the pension. That is 1500 rupees. But what is the difference? Who are the eligible people? Second is, who is implementing the program? These two varies from one to the other. In the case of the Shramayogi Mandan Yojana, who are the eligible people? That is, unorganized sector workers with a monthly income of less than 15,000 rupees. Now, what is the ministry implementing this agency? It is Ministry of Labor and Employment. Remember, there is another scheme called Atal Pension Yojana, which reflects the similar scheme, and we will discuss it later. And uh, Atal Pension Yojana and uh, Shramayogi Mandan Yojana, they are very confusing with each other, and we will also see the differences between them. Now, let us go to the Kisan Mandan Yojana. It is meant to provide pension to the farmers. Obviously, you might be confused who is implementing this program, Ministry of Rural Development, Ministry of Agriculture or LIC. This is the Life Insurance Corporation is implementing Kisan Mandan Yojana. And who are eligible? Small and marginal farmers having uh, land less than 2 hectares, they are eligible for this scheme. Lagu Vyapari Mandan Yojana it is again implemented by Ministry of Labor and Employment. Um, here, the beneficiaries are those having a turnover of 1.5 crore rupees in GST payment terms. Remember carefully, this is meant to benefit retailers and traders. So these are the three Mandan Yojanas. Now let us go further and try to understand Atal Pension Yojana how it is different from these Mandan Yojana, especially Shrema Yogi Mandan Yojana. There are few articles, the great Indian pension mess. We have multiple schemes and these schemes differ from each other. In this context, the author used the word great Indian pension mess. And uh, there is confusion with regard to the pension schemes of the government. In Live Mint, there are many articles. Um, in this context, I am expecting a question over here. So we are comparing two important schemes for unorganized sector workers. One is Prime Minister Shramayogi Mandan Yojana, Atal Pension Yojana. So first is, who is the implementing agency? Ministry of Labor for uh, Shramayogi and Pension Fund Regulatory and Development Authority, PFRDA for Atal Pension Yojana. What is the maximum amount of pension you can get? In Stramayogi Mandan, it is 3,000 rupees per month. But in Atal Pension Yojana, it can vary from 1,000 to 5,000 rupees based on one's contribution. Who are the beneficiaries? See, in Stramayogi Mandan Yojana, there is an income cap of 15,000 rupees. The people who are getting 15,000 or less than 15,000 rupees per month are eligible. In the case of Atal Pension Yojana, no upper limit of income exists for unorganized sector workers. Next, in Stramayogi Mandan Yojana, government and worker contributes on a 50-50 basis and worker has to contribute that monthly. It means it has limitations 
with regard to its use for workers who do not have predictable income. On the other hand, in Atal Pension Yojana, worker can pay monthly, quarterly, half yearly or annually. So Atal Pension Yojana is more useful for the workers with the irregular incomes. The most important difference is this corpus. After 60 years, in Stramayogi Mandan Yojana, no corpus is paid. It means whatever the money which has been paid by the worker is not going into corpus. It is going only into monthly pension. In the case of Atal Pension Yojana, money which has been paid between 18 to 40, 40 years will also go into corpus. It means you receive a corpus money after your retirement, which is the great feature of Atal Pension Yojana. Now, Atal Pension Yojana and Stramayogi Mandan Yojana more or less they are targeting the same kind of beneficiaries the modus operandi is same then why two schemes are necessary is the question so this is where it appears that there is certain fight between ministry of labor and pension fund regulatory and development authority that is why this article is in the news the next most important article on which i am expecting a question is pradhana mantri fazal bima yojana this scheme is totally revamped and today this is called Fuzzle Bhima Yojana 2. Remember, many of the state governments today are opting out of this central scheme and there are criticisms that the gross premium paid to the insurance companies and insurance companies liabilities or claims paid back by the insurance companies are much less than the premiums paid to them. Let us take 1000 crore rupees is paid as a premium. They haven't even paid 500, ru 500 crore rupees as claims. That's how the situation was. And the premiums are going high and high. In this context, um, the government of India took a serious reconsideration of this scheme and it is revamped. The revamped puzzle Bhima Yojana, it is called PMFBY2. So, let us see certain aspects, basics of the scheme. The premium is 2% for Kharif crops, 1.5% for Rabi crops and 5% for horticultural crops which will be collected from the farmers. And the remaining premium whatever is there, it will be paid by the center and the states in 50-50 percentage. Let us take for a particular crop, if premium is 12%. If 2% is paid by the farmers, remaining 10% will be shared in 5-5% five, five by the center and the state governments. Second, the capping of the premium is absent. This is changed now. In original scheme, there is no capping of the premium. And only yield losses are covered. Remember, any agricultural insurance scheme, the biggest challenge is Yield losses are covered but not market losses. Farmer gets the income losses either due to loss of the crop or loss of price. The loss of price is never covered in these insurance schemes. Next is pre-sowing losses. Let us take if a farmer took the loan from the bank and all of a sudden weather got worse and he was unable to sow. In those circumstances the losses are also covered under this scheme. And after the harvest, when he keeps the crop in the farm and there is a sudden rain and the crop got spoiled, then these are called post-harvest losses. These are also covered under the scheme. Post-harvest losses up to 14 days are covered. And implementation of the scheme, area approach. Remember this word, area approach. Let us take, if you take health insurance or motor vehicle insurance, your vehicle is insured or your health is insured. It means individual is the basis for insurance. But in the case of agriculture, it is not the individual farmer who is insured. It is the area which is insured. It means village, tehsil, block. These are taken as the units for insurance. This is what we call it as area approach. Now, how this scheme is revamped? Let us take a look. The first variable is subscription. Previously, the people, the farmers who are getting the loan from the banks, they shall subscribe to this insurance scheme. Now, either you are taking a loan or not taking a loan, you are not forced to take this particular scheme. 
So it is completely voluntary today for everyone. This is the major complaint of the farmers. They are not being given any insurance uh, uh, slips are they are not being provided with the claims but they are been forced to pay the premiums now the scheme has become entirely voluntary and previously as I said to you there was no cap to premium subsidy now today central government has kept a cap on its uh, subsidy so central subsidy is capped at 30 percent for non irrigated land and 25 percent for irrigated areas let us understand this way. Let us take a Karif crop was insured for rupees 1 lakh rupees and the farmer has to pay 2% as the premium. Let us take 2000 rupees and the premium total has to be paid if it is 40%. Already farmer has paid 2%. What is the remaining premium? It is 38%. In this 19% will be shared by the center, 19% will be shared by the states. Now what is the capping means? Today 2% the farmer will pay. Let us take remaining 39%, the center will pay only 14% because in non-irrigated areas it has capped the premium at 30%. It means 2% is paid by the farmers, what is remaining? 28%. 14% will center pay and the remaining 14% states have to pay or if it is more than 30% obviously the burden has to be taken up by the state governments. Center says that I will not consider any scheme or any insurance premium which is more than 30% in non-irrigated areas, 25% in irrigated areas. After this flexibility is given to the states after revamp. They can, in, they can get um, certain crops and certain disasters included which are specific to that particular area. And if the states are not submitting the necessary information for claims um, or not releasing the necessary subsidy in time, then the states may lose share of subsidy from the center in that particular scheme. And then insurance companies are also been assured that uh, they will have the continuous business for three years once they are being empaneled. For northeastern states, previously they have to pay 50% uh, equivalent to other states. Today, they have to pay only 10% of the premium. And crop loss estimates, um, previously technology was used, but crop cutting experiments were becoming the basis. Many of the times these experiments are being delayed which have to be conducted by local agricultural department. In this context, government wanted to use a two-stage process. First weather indicators, satellite indicators, everything are being computed to estimate the losses. And if they are not being well computed, then only cross-cutting experiments are done. It is to improvise the claim submission to the farmers. These are the improvements which are done in the scheme. That's why this can be a very important question for you this year that is Pradhana Mantri Fazal Bhima Yojana 2 can be important to you. Let us go to the other insurance schemes which are there in the news. One is Pradhana Mantri Suraksha Bhima Yojana, Jeevana Jyoti Bhima Yojana and I have also listed Amadmi Bhima Yojana but it is not very much important for the reason that it is no more existing it is being integrated with Jeevan Jyoti Bhima Yojana so I am removing this in these circumstances what is Jeevan Jyoti Bhima Yojana it is a life insurance and 18 to 50 years of age group are being covered and life risk life cover is for 2 lakh rupees what is the premium that has to be paid 330 rupees per annum and next coming to Suraksha Bhima Yojana, it is an accidental insurance which is implemented by any general insurance company. Premium is only rupees 12 per annum and 2 lakh rupees is covered in case of accidental death or permanent disability. If it is a partial disability, 1 lakh rupees is being paid to the victim. So these are the two things we need to remember as part of this. The next scheme is Pradhana Mantri Kisan Sampada Yojana. It is a complete central sector scheme. It means 100% is paid by the central government. And it is under Ministry of Food Processing. 
Previously, we have Sampada scheme named Sampada scheme for agro marine processing and development of agro processing clusters. Remember the word clusters, cluster based approach towards the development uh, is the foundation for this particular scheme. So various clusters are developed. What are the seven components of this Kisan Sampada Yojana? Remember these seven components, mega food parks, integrated cold chain and value addition infrastructure, agro processing clusters, backward and forward linkages, creation and expansion of food processing and preservation capacities, food safety and quality assurance infrastructure, and finally human resources and institutions. So the main objective of this is to create value addition for Indian agri and aqua produce. Remember, it is not just for agricultural produce, it is also for aqua marine processing. So it creates direct and indirect rural employment. 35% to 75% is the subsidy given by the central government. All this subsidy comes as a grant in aid. This is a capital subsidy. So one-time subsidy which an investor or entrepreneur is going to get. This is Kisan Sampada Yojana. The next which is very much in the news that is Swanidhi scheme. So you know Atmanirbar Bharat is very important because of COVID-19. Among this Atmanirbar schemes, two important schemes are Garib Kalyan Anna Yojana, Garib Kalyan Rojgar Abhiyan, and Pradhan Mantri Swanidhi. Who are the targeted beneficiaries? These are street vendors. So this is a micro credit scheme for the urban poor. Normally, urban poor are worst affected in any crisis compared to the rural poor. Why? Urban poor are difficult to be identified and there are no proper institutional systems to make the finances or benefits to reach to them. And there is no dedicated ministry that is focused on the urban poor. Then who is implementing this particular scheme? Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs. It is valid up to March 2022. Here, MFIs, microfinance institutions, SHGs, self-help groups, non-banking finance companies are involved for the first time to make the benefits to reach to the urban poor. And the second part is, remember a point, urban poor are not getting any free credit over here. They are getting 10,000 rupees of credit which has to be paid back by them at 7% interest rate. It means if they pay the money back in time, this 7% interest rate is being removed for them. In this case, use of technology has to be emphasized. If they are taking up digital transactions, if the street vendors are taking up digital transactions, they are being incentivized. Is it collateral free loan or collateral required for this? It's a completely collateral free loan. So Indian government started believing in its uh, micro entrepreneurs. If you remember the Bangladesh Grameen Bank experiment, what is this? Believing in the micro entrepreneurship capabilities of the people living at bottom. So Pradhana Mantri Swanidhi, it is about micro financing the micro entrepreneurs uh, who are living at the bottom of the pyramid. The next is Pradhana Mantri Vandan Yojana. So you have you remembered the Amul revolution for milk? It is about bringing all the milk producers in a cooperative framework and ensuring proper income for them and maximizing the milk production in India. The similar thing for the minor forest produce is being planned under Vandan Yojana. So I can say Vandan Yojana is a moon kind of revolution in minor forest produce. Who is implementing this scheme? Ministry of Tribal Affairs and TriFed is the nodal agency. How this scheme is implemented? A particular group of people, at least some 30 people, they are being made into a group, self-help group. This is what is called Vandan, Vandan Vikas Samoha. And these Vikas Samohas 
at least 10 together these are made into vikas kendras this vikas kendra will have primary processing infrastructure with regard to the forest produce after that you have secondary processing the state governments or corporates they establish the secondary processing facilities in ppp model public private partnership model and that will be processed well packed and it will reach to the consumer it means producer and consumer are connected with the help of the state government and corporates and added to that income security and through it empowerment is been given to the tribal societies that's why this scheme is very important the next scheme is atal bhujal yojana to understand this scheme let us see the statistics india accounts for 16 percent of the world's population living in less than 2.5 percent of the global area and has just four percent of the global water resources if you see cwc central water commission benchmarks a water stressed condition is that per capita availability of water shall fall below 1700 cubic meters and water scarcity condition is that when per capita availability falls below 1000 cubic meters in almost all the river basins in India, we have a water scarcity condition. Krishna, Kaveri, Subarnareka, Penna, Mahi, Sabarmati, west flowing rivers like uh, Luni, everywhere if you see, you have this water scarcity conditions. It is most acute in Kaveri, Penna, Sabarmati basins. In these circumstances, groundwater recharging is very important. What is the board we have for monitoring the groundwater? Central Groundwater Board. It has got national hydrograph monitoring stations. How it monitors that groundwater levels? One is through dug wells. Second one, piezometers. In the bore wells, um, these piezometers are been placed uh, to, to monitor the pressure and depth of the water. So remember that piezometers. Now, Jal Shakti Ministry has come up with many schemes, Jal Jeevan Mission and uh, improving the our irrigation facilities. Now we are talking about groundwater. So with regard to water, one or the other question is expected in the schemes this year. In this case, um, this scheme is implemented seven states um, and these seven states are severely water stressed. In this case, Community participation, community-led water security plans, water user associations, water budgeting, etc. are being introduced. And here better performing districts and states, they will be incentivized by more funds. And remember, panchayats are leading this particular scheme. And here, whatever the funds to the states will be given to them as grants in aid. And completely central government is helping out and central government is contributing 50 percent remaining 50 percent are coming from the world bank previously there was a question on this which of the following are been funded by the world bank if such a question comes atal bujal yojana is also funded by the world bank it is implemented not across all the states it is implemented only in seven states you need to remember that particular point the most important scheme during covid 19 pradhana mantri garib kalyan yojana if you can recollect in 2016 this scheme has come into existence when government is trying to crack down on black money according to this black money collected under tax amnesty scheme is supposed to go towards Garib Kalyan Yojana. So 25% of the undisclosed income can be invested in this scheme and it will be returned to this investor after four years without any interest. That is how this scheme has come into existence. This scheme is used during COVID-19 to provide help for the poor people. What are the various benefits offered under this scheme? Under this women are given 500 rupees if they hold Jandan Yojana account, a bank account. MG Narega wages are being raised from 182 rupees to 202 rupees. LPG cylinders for 8 crore families 
are being provided free under Pradhan Mantri Ujjwala Yojana. And rupees, thousand rupees are being given for widows, senior citizens and disabled. Healthcare workers are being provided 50 lakh rupees of healthcare insurance for 90 days. 24% of the monthly wages will be paid to PF accounts of organized workers. Employees' contribution and empl employers' contribution both will be paid by the government to the provident fund account. And then EPF regulations are also relaxed. Now the people can withdraw 75% of the amount or 3 months salary whichever is lower. And then Kisan Samman Nidhi installment is released early at 2000 rupees. Many of the opposition parties were asking for giving 7000 rupees to the farmers. So this government did not give any extra. It has just released 2000 rupees early. And central government has also ordered the state government to use building and construction workers welfare fund to provide relief to the construction workers. And then state governments can use district mineral fund to provide assistance and necessary facilities for testing under COVID-19. These are the things which are being stated. And to provide for food grains, gar grains Garib Anna Yojana is there. 5 kgs of wheat or rice for free for 80 crore people per month and 1 kg of dal is provided till November. This is Garib Kalyan Anna Yojana. Here opposition is talking about universal public distribution scheme has to be brought in to ensure people free from hunger. That is not accepted. And most important thing is Garib Kalyan Rojigar Yojana. You know that many of the migrant laborers moved back to their home during this crisis situation. They walked for thousands and thousands of kilometers. When they went back home to provide them the necessary employment there, Garib Kalyan Rojgar Yojana has come up, which is implemented across 116 districts in six states. 25 different works are identified to develop infrastructure in rural areas and it is implemented for 125 days with a budget of 50,000 crore rupees. So just remember what all the various benefits offered under this particular scheme that is more than sufficient for you. Now let us see certain questions as part of this discussion. Which of the following are the incorrect statements? See the word incorrect statements in the context of Atal Pension Yojana. As I said to you, Shramayogi Kalyan Mandan Yojana and Atal Pension Yojana, you can get confused. It is implemented by Ministry of Labor and Employment. No, it is implemented by PFRDA. It provides for fixed pension. No, fixed pension is provided under Mandan Yojana. Workers uh, monthly income less than 15,000 are eligible. This cap exists in Mandan Yojana. So all the three are wrong. What he is asking, correct or incorrect statement? Incorrect statement. Then answer will be D. Let us see the second question. Which of the following are the focus of Pradhana Mantri Garib Kalyan Yojana? So Garib Kalyan Yojana is an umbrella scheme which also includes Garib Rojgar Yojana. So providing local employment for workers at their home for a specified period, yes, it is part of Garib Kalyan Yojana. Medical cover for healthcare workers, you know, 50 lakh rupees for 90 days of health uh, medical insurance cover is provided to them. To pay salaries to people who lost jobs in organized and unorganized sectors, no. Indian government is criticized for not providing any relief for the job losses. So it is reported widely across the Hindu editorials. So that's why third is absolutely wrong. Answer is 1 comma 2. The next, which of the following is non, uh, not a component of Pradhan Mantri Kisan Sampada Yojana? Food processing and mega food parks, yes. It also aqua processing, so marine food processing. Food safety testing, yes. Income assurance to farmers, no. It is only value addition and providing for processing infrastructure in India. So the third is not part of the, fourth is not part of the thing. So he is asking not a component. So answer is D. Fourth question, which of the following are correct statements regarding Atal Bhujal Yojana? It is implemented across all the states of India. No, 
only seven states. This is a strong statement. It is led by local panchayats. True. Only two is right. B is the right answer. The next question is related to Pradhana Mantri Vandan Yojana. Which of the following is the objective? They are just asking the objective of Pradhana Mantri Vandan Yojana. It is to ensure income security to tribal people. Yes, it is meant to empower and give income security to them. To organize tribal women into self-help groups. This also appears true to me. But the word here is tribal women. Do we have gender specification in Vandan Yojana? There is no gender specification. So it is not specifically meant for tribal women. That's why this statement is wrong. To create market for all forest produce? No, this is only for minor forest produce. After that, increase revenue for the state? No, this is absolutely wrong. So the answer I will go with is answer A. Next question is Pradhana Mantri Fuzzle Bhima Yojana. As we have discussed, it is revamped. It is called Fuzzle Bhima Yojana 2. So let us see the correct statements regarding Fuzzle Bhima Yojana. States can opt out from the scheme and make their own farm insurance schemes. True. You know that Jharkhand, Bihar, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, all these are opting out from Fuzzle Bhima Yojana. If I am not wrong, West Bengal also. So many of the states are opting out of the scheme. Farmers taking loans also can choose this scheme on voluntary basis. Previously, it was compulsory for them. In revamp, it is made voluntary. So here it is thought that uh, the number of farmers opting for the scheme will become very less. Finally, central subsidy is capped on this scheme. This is the major change. The premium is capped for irrigated lands at 25% and 30% in the case of non-irrigated lands. So in the revamped structure, all these three statements are correct. With this, I am closing this particular discussion. Thank you very much. Have a great day. I wish you all the best for your prelims examination.